afternoon, friends, and welcome to Wednesday Inspiration for February the 1st, 2023. I am the Reverend Dr. Mary Biedren, Senior Minister of North Church, and I'm getting a message on my screen. I've just got to... <sighs> these computers. I am the Senior Minister of North Congregational Church, and this is our weekly time of some scripture, some thinking, some prayer, some music, um, just sort of a little, a little refresher in the week that helps us to follow the life of faith more closely. And I am, I am seeking faith right now. I, I don't know why. No, no amount of preparation seems to mitigate the fact that my, um, my video production program always wants to update within five minutes of the, of the scheduled program. And so there's always a, a last minute hustle to get everything set up. Although if three years ago you told me that I would be doing desktop video production, I would never have believed you. And such is the life we live in the time of COVID. So today I thought for these next few Wednesdays until we get to Lent, which begins on Ash Wednesday, uh, which is the, I have that date, the 22nd of February, um, I thought that I would do a little mini series on some of the things that are part of the great commandments of God to us. You know they are. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. But what does that really kind of mean? How does that reflect? So I thought that might be interesting to look at that and to just ponder for a little bit how we might love God too. And then we'll have some music and some prayer. So we know that the Bible is a whole long story of God and people. And it is about how people are created in God's image. And then about how something went wrong with people. How people um, fell away and fell short in love. And had to find their way back to both the source of love and the source of life and light, which is God. We call God by many names. I'm not going to get into the whole uh, global religions discussion with this, but uh, love of God and love of neighbor are two major tenets that identify something as a religious faith. So the great commandment, the organizing principle of uh, the Jewish faith and subsequently of Christianity is the great commandment. And it is given in Deuteronomy, and I'm reading now from my Oxford Annotated Bible um, in the New Revised Standard Version. Um, in the book of Deuteronomy, Moses is bringing the law and the agreements of the law and the practice of the law to the people of God as they travel in the desert and as they prepare to take up residence in the Promised Land. Though Moses did not accompany them to the Promised Land, he shaped their understanding because he was their intermediary with God. And so he brings the word. He says in Deuteronomy 6, this is the commandment, the statutes and the ordinances that the Lord the God, your God charged me to teach you to observe in the land that you are about to cross into and occupy so that you and your children's children and your, you and your children and your children's children may fear the Lord your God with all the days of your life and keep all his decrees and commandments. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe them diligently, so it may go well with you, so that you may multiply in a land flowing with milk and honey, as the Lord, your God of your ancestors, has promised you. And then this is the Shema. So Shema Yisrael is how it begins in Hebrew. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding to you today in your hearts. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand, fix them as an emblem on your forehead, and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So in Judaism, there are little touchstones on the doorposts of houses called mezuzahs, and they have this command in it. And when you see very orthodox men praying, and they will often have a little box strapped to their forehead, that is a box containing the Shema, the hero Israel, the Lord our God is God, the Lord alone, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And this was also something 
that Jesus lifted up. So it was not something that, that was at odds with what he was teaching or what he was being. Um, and so, got too many markers in this Bible. So in Luke, we hear Jesus meeting with a, a lawyer, a teacher of the law, who wants to test Jesus just to see if he really knows what he's talking about in his teaching. And he says, teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, what is it written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. So we will get to the second part of this, your neighbor as yourself next week. But what does it mean to love God? What does it mean to be in a loving way with God? This command really outlines it, which is God is God. God is your God. God is the only God. You don't worship this one for this and that one for that, which had been characteristic of many um, ancient Near Eastern religions. And even in the time of Jesus was characteristic of the uh, Greek and Roman pantheons that were part of the world in his time. Instead, it is to recognize God as the creator of all that is, to award to God the loyalty, the, the fullness of our hearts, to seek God's truth ahead of all else, and to live as one of God's people. Now, what that involves is sometimes complicated because a lot of people have spent years trying to figure out if that means that if you obey these certain laws and you do these certain things, you will achieve it, you will earn it. But in fact, the love of God is not anything that we are capable of earning. We just aren't. We just can't. The only way that we can respond to the love of God, which is given abundantly and freely and without price, is to love God in return, to give our primary attention and loyalty to God. So in Psalm 8, which is a Psalm of David, who knew quite a bit about loving God, even when he couldn't be very perfect himself, we hear an example of what it means for the heart of a person to reach out and love God. In Psalm 8, David sings, O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens, out of the mouths of babes and infants. You have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. When we pray the way that Jesus taught us to, which we will at the end of this time as well, we say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And sometimes it sort of seemed like an intro, but it is the pledge of the person who is giving their love, their hearts, mind, and soul, and faith to God, and placing their faith in God. Now, sometimes that is a difficult thing. It is. First of all, because we can't see God. We have Jesus in him. He has shown God has disclosed God's own self if God were in a person. But it is not the same thing as seeing God. God tells Moses, if you see me, if you really looked on me, it would destroy you because I am too great for your intelligence and your, your senses to even encompass. And so we are... We are given this, this God that is not visibly present except in all of creation, in the beauty, in the wonders and the splendor, as David said, except in the image with which we are all made and the intelligence with which we are endowed. There are so many ways that we can find God, that we can perceive God, that we can use the world around us and our own minds to draw ourselves closer to God. The first thing that it requires truly is that we open our hearts and our souls and our minds to the greatness of, a, of God who loves us, a force of nature, a force of, of the universe, a f source of energy. There are lots of ways to understand it, not necessarily superstitious ways, ways that, that help us to see this greater than us source of love in all the universe. 
source of altruism, source of, of everything and say, this needs to come first. And then all the other things will be added. Jesus promises this. He says, if you seek first the kingdom of God and God's righteousness, if you love God, then you will find all these other things in the world are added unto you. But first, it must begin with God. So I thought, thinking of the never-ending, generous, abundant, almost ludicrously excessive love of God that is lavished upon us, I would play uh, Patricia Butler on the North Church organ playing the hymn, O oh, Love That Will Not Let Me Go. And then when we come back, we will have a time of prayer. Well, my goodness, Sandy, thank you. I don't know how I ended up muted like that. It's supposed to end with the 
end of the video. I'm going to redo that part by reading you these words once again, if I can find this. Find this hymnal page. And my friends, this is a reminder to us all that at the heart of the good news of God's love is that we don't have to be perfect. Thank God, because we are not perfect. The mistakes are part of how we learn. Mistakes are the ways that we learn to not take ourselves too seriously. So thankfully for friends who can alert me to these things, hear the words. O love that will not let me go, I rest my weary soul in you. I give you back the life I owe, that in your ocean depths its flow may swell with ardor true. O light that follows all my way, to you I yield my flickering flame. Renew my spirit's feeble ray, that from your brilliant sunlit day it may new brightness claim. O joy that seeks me through my pain, to you I cannot close my heart. I trace the rainbow through the rain, and know the promise is not vain, that you will ne'er depart. And now let us pray. O gracious God, creator of all that is, you have made us in your image. You have endowed us with so many gifts. You have loved us as your children. You seek to lift us up, to help us to find our way back to you. May your mighty spirit rise up within us and help us to follow in the path that Jesus has shown us so that we may find the truth about the good news that your kingdom has drawn near, that it is here right now, and that we may live into it, that we are rewarded with light and life and love when we follow in your, in your way that you have shown us. Oh God, sometimes it's challenging to follow. Three years ago, a novel virus was declared a global pandemic, and those three years have changed us and altered us. Those three years have shaken a lot of the things that we trusted in. It has restructured the world. It has restructured the way we think about ourselves in the world. But your love has never changed, O oh God. And so as we seek health in the midst of all these things, as we seek to get vaccinated from it, as we seek to avoid getting sick from it, as we seek to prevent people from dying, as we seek to be your people in the midst of a ravaging disease that claims lives and that seems to steal into our lives insidiously and silently, we put our faith in you. Show us how to heal the sick, the sickness in ourself, not only the body, but also of mind and heart, and maybe especially of mind and heart. Lift us up when we are discouraged. Comfort us when we are dismayed. Help us to see through our own tears the rainbow that comes from your light upon all water, even those of our tears. Help us to know that your presence is always with us, that the things that happen to us are not a sign of your lack of love or a punishment of us, but instead are the way of a world which operates according to its own rules. And yet we may live by your law of love. And so help us to care for one another Help us not only to be loving towards you, but to see that the way we can express that love is by being loving towards one another. Not just those whom we like, not just those who are in our family, not just those who are, are somehow deserving in our minds, but all your children. And so give us the ability out of the goodness of our hearts, not to out of pity, not out of a sense of superiority, but instead out of a sense of love and care for all your children, Help us to feed the hungry, to help the poor meet basic needs, to house the homeless, to comfort those who grieve losses, both large and small, losses of material goods, losses of status, losses of sense of security, losses of certain physical faculties, losses of mental faculties, most of all, losses of those whom we've loved to death. It is easy, O oh God, for us to see death as the enemy, to see death as the ultimate fear, and yet, we have your word that love is stronger than death and that your love is so much stronger than death that you could raise Jesus from the dead to show us once and for all the path that we are to follow. Help us to do that, O oh God. 
Let us be inspired by the people who have gone before us into your eternal light, who have died out of this life, but who live on in our blessed memories. When we grieve, when we miss them, when we feel that it is hard to go on without them, comfort us, God, and let their examples, let the love they showed, let the humor and the stories, let the cautions and the tales be part of our lives too, so that we may live more fully because of them. And then help us, O God, to be ones who show examples and love to others. Bless us even when we don't feel very blessed. Love us even when we don't feel very lovable. Forgive us when we are afraid that we are unforgivable and guide us even when we think we are utterly lost. Show us how you can find us even in the darkest place, heart and mind, and you can once again walk with us into the light. We know all of these things are possible through your love, your great love, lifted up in us by the Holy Spirit, given to us through the love of, and teachings of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So this week, I would love to encourage you to seek signs of God's love rising up within you, the joy when you look upon nature, the happiness that you feel when you are with ones you love, the, the sense of dedication that you feel when you are doing the work of grace and reconciliation and compassion in this world. Next week, we will think about what it means to love your neighbor as yourself. I imagine that that, that will be a very interesting conversation. But in the meantime, thank you for your patience. When I have updates that come two minutes before I go on the air, it's hard sometimes to notice all the fine settings. So I appreciate the help and the guidance of my beloved friends. I invite you to walk in the ways of light and life and love till we meet again.